Hi, Blogging Heads viewers. It's Daniel Strauss of Woodruff and Strauss in Politico, and I'm here today in our uh, outside of a rainy sort of uh, DC scape with Betsy Woodruff of the Daily Beast. And uh, it's a big week, Betsy. <laughs> so many feelings. Uh, yeah, our, our cruise coaster reporter, our, our lead cruise reporter, just walked in and she said, like, it's the end of an era. Uh, you know, Ted Cruz yeah. dropped out. Uh, John Kasich dropped out. We have a nominee. It's Donald <laughs> Trump. <laughs> nope. That is a completely, no contested convention. Nope. That is a completely factual statement right there. Yep. It is uh, Donald Trump is the, nom is the nominee of the Republican Party of the United States of America in 2016. <laughs> wow. And That's not good. only that, but uh, Reince Priebus um, sent out, a, well, he sent out a few tweets. He couldn't quite get the spelling correct. Right. Uh, saying that he's a nominee and s essentially signaling it's time to wrap it up, everyone else. And the next right. day, John Kasich dropped out. <laughs> yes, indeed. These are all factual statements. So, yeah, I mean, I feel like it took me about 24 hours to just sort of adjust to all these changes uh, because it all happened so fast. Um, and I, I, one thing that I find sort of uniquely mind boggling about this is that the Republican primary has wrapped up before the Democratic primary. A year ago, if somebody told you that Donald Trump would lock up the Republican nomination before Hillary Clinton did, um, I, I just, I would have thought I was on drugs. Uh, yeah. But here we are. And I think, I'm, you know, I'm not sure what that speaks to. I don't know that I have good analysis or like a good take on why that is. Um, but it's really, yeah, it's just weird. It's a lot to process. I feel like, I feel like I'm still sort of processing the last... 48 hours or so. Um, you know, one thing that I wrote about today that I think is is sort of an interesting next step in this primary is the West Virginia Democratic primary. Yeah, uh, I was actually just working on a piece about that. Oh, awesome. Yeah, so, so the fun thing about West Virginia is that I don't think there's another state in the country that's gone through such dramatic and likely, you know, permanent or as, as permanent as politics can get, permanent political shift in 16 years as West Virginia has. Mm -hmm. Remember, Bill Clinton won West Virginia handily both times he ran for president. He won it with so much ease that Al Gore barely even campaigned there in 2000. You know, Gore just took the state for granted. However, Gore ended up losing. George W. Bush won, which was sort of the first hint that West Virginia was catching up with the rest of the, stout, the South and recognizing that it was a southern state. Of course, West Virginia is not like other southern states and that it also has a sizable union presence. And it's overwhelmingly white, about about you know ninety four to ninety seven percent white. Right. Whereas other southern states of, have larger right. have larger populations of color. So that makes it sort of the perfect state, like you know, like a state that was produced in a lab for Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump. Um, one thing that I wrote about today that I found especially fascinating about this is that sort of right in the middle of West Virginia's shift from so blue, Al Gore took it for granted to so red Donald Trump can take it for granted, you know, right in the middle, Hillary Clinton won a Democratic primary there in 2008. She won by, she won by 40 points, if memory serves, just sort of ran away with it. Um, but now all the public polling, and it is scant, but the scant public polling indicates that Bernie Sanders is going to, is potentially going to do quite well there. Right. Um, so it's interesting as kind of a, it's obviously not a microcosm of the country at all, like at all whatsoever. But it's interesting in that West Virginia has kind of been counter cyclical, you know, kind of the, fo the fish swimming upstream. Every, all the national trends that we see, kind of the opposite is happening in West Virginia. Um, and, and I think that makes it especially interesting that Trump and Sanders do so well there. Yeah, I mean, and the other thing, I, want, I learned one more wonky point, because I guess we're both chasing West Virginia stories right now. Yeah. They have four political parties in the state and a semi-closed primary where you can, you can choose, if you're unaffiliated with these four parties, you can choose which primary to vote for. But if you are aligned with one of these parties, you have to vote in their primary. And the four are the Democratic Party, the left-leaning Mountain Party, the Libertarian Party, and the Republican Party. I don't know what I'm talking about. I didn't about. know about the Mountain Party. That's a fun fact. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's Is that only in West Virginia? Yeah, I think so. I haven't heard of it anywhere else. Um, huh. You know, I was talking to the West Virginia state director for Bernie Sanders yesterday who explained this to me. Um, 
So, and it's, you know, it's a state that has a conservative le legislature right now, but Joe Manchin and Earl Ray Thompson is Tomlin. the governor. Tomlin. Tomlin. Earl Ray Tomlin is the governor. So they still have some Democrats up top, but it's always, and I always, I definitely consider it a red state. Um, 100%. Right. Yeah. The only reason, like, Manchin has survived for as long as he has is partially because uh, he uh, likes to buck the party a lot and if i recall there was some talk once upon a time uh, a few years ago about like some some sort of effort by republicans to try and get mansion to move over to the republican side that yeah mansion i think is definitely the democratic senator with the best relationships with republicans in the senate yeah uh i mean west virginia is just as red as massachusetts is blue right you know just because you have a governor who's of the opposite party doesn't necessarily right. mean that much um and yeah, just, just just fascinating stuff. You know, one thing that I thought was fun about West Virginia is that w one explanation I heard from a guy who actually worked for Bill Clinton and Al Gore's campaigns in West Virginia back in the 90s, one thing he told me is that part of the reason Clinton is struggling so much there is that even though she, neither she nor Bernie's campaigns have really spent any serious money on ads, there's a state Supreme Court candidate who has an ad up this, you know, my source said he, the ad is blanketing the state. As soon as you turn on TV, you see this ad. And the ad features prominently a quote from Hillary Clinton saying she wanted coal miners to lose their jobs. Right. Now, Clinton hasn't responded to that. Uh, it's an ad that a conservative Supreme Court candidate is running. But yeah. it's just reminding people all the time about this quote she gave. And even though she's sort of tried to walk it back or well, she apologized, apologized or explain it away, about it in the state she when she's confronted. She even apologized, right. though. I mean, it was it was sort of a weird. I was taken out of context line that was you know sort of classic Hillary Clinton apolo apologetic non apology, right. uh, and that's really damaged her. I, I find that particularly fascinating because Bernie Sanders is probably one of the most anti fossil fuel candidates that's ever run for president in American history. Right. Uh, and West Virginia's economy is is very you know inextricably linked to the fossil fuel economy. Right. But the fact that Clinton came off as glib and uncaring and and uh you know uninvested in the well-being of west virginians it doesn't matter what our public policy views right, are right. um it's perception no, of i mean you know it, it's because partially because clinton is 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 not new and sanders is new so he can shape himself and she can he can ride on that union support and uh he doesn't have to worry about uh sort of the fossil fuel stuff when you've got video of clinton being like, we're going to end all those jobs. Because it's really not, it's not her saying, like, I hate coal. It's saying, right. I hate, or we're going to end your source of income. Yeah, and right. It falls we're going to hurt your family. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> I hope you don't care about clothing your children. You're not going to be able to do it. Oh, that's... And I mean, and I, think, and I think perhaps what this speaks to is Clinton's larger weakness as a candidate. I... Uh, the reality is that she isn't as good at running for president as Obama was, and she has. She said that herself, though. She, she said that herself. You know, she has a. But, but like, it's true, and and this West Virginia problem is a reminder of that. She should be walking away with West Virginia. Bernie Sanders should not be competitive there. It's a, it's an incredibly cheap state. She has lots of money. I mean, you could run ads in West Virginia for like five bucks, right? Mm -hmm. Like she won there already. We should um, maybe Bill advertise Clinton this podcast in West Virginia. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Bill Clinton is revered in West Virginia. Yep. They love him. Um, Democrats there are are sort of desperate for a candidate like Hillary, who is is you know who can paint herself as moderate. And I mean, for goodness sakes, like Hillary that says she doesn't even want to ban fracking. Like West Virginians should be eating that up. But right. instead, and and I mean the other and the caveat to this is that she could still win. Right. Um, I would not be surprised if she won West Virginia, but it shouldn't it shouldn't be competitive. Like it's, Sanders it's should not close. be able to play right. there. Right. Yeah. There's a PPP poll showing Sanders up by single digits. There was one a few months back showing Sanders up by like double digits. Yeah, it's I not... don't take that seriously. That was the West Virginia Metro poll, yeah. and and all the border counties in Ohio and Virginia that touch West Virginia pretty went pretty overwhelmingly for Clinton. Mm -hmm. They're usually a really good bellwether of how West Virginia votes because it's kind of the same types of economies, same types of voters. Right. Um, in those counties, there was nothing indicating when they voted that it was similar to those West Virginia Metro poll numbers. The other thing is that um, Hoppy Kirchival, who's a talk radio host who works with West Virginia Metro, told me that they're going to have a new poll coming out on Friday. And Hoppy said that based on the numbers he's seen thus far as they're putting it together, Bernie's lead is only going to be in the margin of error. 
Um, so, you know, who knows? Who knows? It's, it's a close race. It's not, you know, Bernie isn't walking away with it. Mm-hmm. But it shouldn't, it shouldn't even be competitive. Right. Clinton, Clinton should own West Virginia. Right. And she doesn't. Right, right. Well, <laughs> you know, I mean, but that's, and that's it, though. But uh, Democrats I talked to, I talked to a Clinton fundraiser this morning, are pretty uh, bullish on her. I mean, they're like, you know, he may win a few more contests, but, like, we got, it's 2387, I think, is the number. Like, mm-hmm. we're fine. The delegates, you know, it's time to... Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know we want we want to we want to let Bernie end gracefully, but that's you know it's over. It's time to shut that whole thing down. Yeah, but like it's you know what's amazing is a friend. Uh, what's amazing is that uh, Donald Trump cleared the field before Hillary Clinton did. Think yeah. about that. I mean, like. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, let's be real. Bernie Sanders supporters were more dogged and committed than Ted Cruz's. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's a big deal. I, you know, that the, tells the you something about I America. saw about uh, Sanders or about the Cruz uh, event last night were, uh, or when he dropped out were grim. You know, I mean, concession <laughs> parties are like the the, yeah. the victory parties when a candidate drops out. You can victory really, you can parties. sense it uh, on the wall. Not a happy time. Yeah, and this one was apparently like staffers. Uh, were just like tearing up. Uh, there was like uh, interrupted or uh, sort of uh, uh, recitations of God Bless America and just full thing. So many feelings. I mean, so many feelings. <laughs> Not good. Not good. But that's, that's how these things end, you know? It's never, it's never fun to watch them end. Um, yeah. Jeez, oh man. Jeez, oh I don't know. Man. Uh, were you surprised Kasich dropped out as soon as he did? I don't know. I go back and forth. I was surprised Kasich got this far. I've been thinking about that. I don't have any reporting that I know on this, but like, I, he's, I, 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 it's not hard to imagine he, there was a lot of pressure and it just like, it happened so quickly that it's, it's hard to not see party leaders being like, okay, John, it's over. All right. You need to stop this right now. Yeah. Um, you know, especially after Ted Cruz dropped out. And for Kasich, you know, he got visibly frustrated when he'd be asked, like, you've only won one state. What's your claim to the nomination here? You've only won your home state. You know? Um, yeah, I, I, I'm surprised about a contested, that there won't be a contested convention. But at the same time, like, a con- contested convention is the worst situation for either party really like a really vicious one where all the press is fascinated by it all the networks want to cover it because it's trump 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 all the time (laughs) you know yeah i i can see how that would be even more damaging than the, the you know any sort of philosophy about who the candidate at the top is i wish i hadn't spent all that time learning about delegate allocations oh waste (laughs) Dumb. <laughs> Get that information out of my brain. Well, I uh, we don't know. We, well, delete. You know. <laughs> Forget that. Drink that one away. Uh, Minutes I will never get back. You don't minutes know that. and minutes. There could be, you don't know, someday, and you might have to take some kind of like civics test or something. You don't That's know, true. Betsy. You never don't know. know. You never know. What does tomorrow bring? We don't know. That's why we're in the news business, <laughs> all right? Because it's news. Has anybody gone to a psychic yet this cycle and asked what's going to happen? I feel like, I feel I've like we're to, about at that point. I've been to a psychic point. once. She, I don't remember. Like, yeah, it, did she give you any valuable information? No, Anything she did not give me any valuable information. I mean, huh. no. I, uh, I, find me a good psychic first, Betsy. Okay, we'll do it. You, you will? Well, I don't know. I'll check Yelp or something. So what else is there to say about Trump? I mean, now that the party <laughs> has to, like... I, I'm sorry. Uh, there, yeah, what else is there? How, how, how seriously do you take Never Trump? How, do I take what? Never Trump. Sort of the conservative opposition. What are, I mean, what are your, what what are your thoughts done, on that? What have man? We have a story up today about how, you know, there are a lot of donors who just still don't want to open their checkbooks. They didn't want to open it for the Never Trump movement, and now they don't want to open it for Trump. Yeah. So they're just keeping it closed the whole time. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I, I think 
I think th- I, 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 have, I have a hard time picturing these guys being so reviled by Trump that they support Hillary Clinton, don't you? Oh, I mean, yeah. I just don't there see was... a, a huge wave of anti-Trump sentiment booing Clinton in any notable manner. Totally. And there was a quote in The Hill that I thought was hilarious from, I think his name is Stanley Hubbard, uh-huh. um, a Minnesota mega donor. Yeah, Stanley Hubbard, billionaire who's, who gave to almost every Republican presidential campaign and who also gave 10 grand to our principal's PAC, which is a never Trump PAC that was spending money against him. Right. And Stanley Hubbard told The Hill that he's actually going to be giving to Trump now, <laughs> even though he gave to anti-Trump. And the reason he said was... Hillary Clinton is a tool of the union bosses and left-wing fruitcakes, believers of global warming, and that's more scary. Mm. I think the left-wing fruitcakes think that Hillary Clinton is like a conservative in a, in liberal sheep's clothing. Yeah. I don't yeah. really, I mean, I really, I, I don't know. I, you know, you know what I, you know what I expected more of? in this nominating process is more Republicans being giddy over Sanders and just being like, hope I please, 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 please. They've been so preoccupied with their side, they haven't been able to like, you know. There's, there's no shot in Florida. The, they, yeah, can't, they can't go after Hillary's low approval ratings because Trumps are lower. Um, yeah, I know. There's, it's, it seems like it's been such a joyless process for them. Yeah, I mean, just, so, and we're gonna pivot to the, we're gonna do, Trump versus Hillary after this. Yeah. What did you think about... Oh, the one thing since we last talked, Carly Fiorina was... Oh, yeah. And we Literally, talk- the entire Carly Fiorina vice presidential campaign happened between episodes of Blogging Heads. Yeah. And oh. it, it was oh. full of... Her biggest moments were singing. Yeah. Ted Cruz breaking the news that she sang for her and Heidi on the bus. I really want to know. I really do want to know, like, how did that... like? I don't know, Betsy, when we hang out, do you ever like, are you, do you ever want to say like, Daniel, break in the song, sing me a little <laughs> jig, you know? No, I can't say I have. No. I'm thinking about it. I don't, th- I don't think, I, no, you know. the answer to that is no. However, <laughs> I, I found her singing to her dogs to be eminently relatable. Um, I get that a hundred percent. He never sung to a dog. You need to find a dog and sing to it because it's a great thing to do. Okay. Um, I, yeah, like, of course, but no, singing to fellow adult peers on a bus, not something I've done. You know, not ruling it out. But and then there were just gifts good. of like Cruz elbowing Heidi. Oh my God. Carly Fiorina so falling sad. down. You know. So sad. I, my favorite um, sad Ted Cruz video was some guy in Indiana who said, hey, can I shake your hand? Too slow, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> just like, uh, oh my God. There's a, there's a point, I feel, in these races where, like, the emotional toll becomes unbearable, and it doesn't matter what your strategist can tell you about how much money you have left or what right. your team's like or right. delegate from the second ballot. There's a point where it's like, I'm tired of being called a fish monster, right. and I'm tired of watching people fall off stages, and I'm really sad, and I don't want to do this anymore. Well, well, and my, my suspicion is that that's, that's how it got to be for So first. I guess, we're, I guess the point, we're, we're at the point in, a, in the cycle right now where the real question is, like, a, um, you know, everybody starts to remember endorsements and where they go, right? So, uh-huh. like, closing out today, I just want to, like, point out, like, are, do you expect a lot of people to in- endorse Trump who were backing Cruz out of just sort of revulsion? Yeah, like, I mean, I think, I think a good number will. And the same thing with Sanders. Do you think the hardcore Sanders... I mean, that, because that's a big question, right? Do the hardcore Sanders supporters just, you know, be like, Hillary, she's better than that, you know? Um, I don't know. I don't have an answer to that. Um, I mean, I think I think the Sanders supporters on the Hill will support Hillary, no question. Mm-hmm. Um, but do the Sanders activists get on board with her? I honestly don't know. I don't yeah. know. Nothing matters. I have no idea what's happening. I don't know what's going on. Less than two hundred days till it's less than I think. Yeah, less than two hundred days till uh, this is all over, yeah. and I can't wait. Thank the Lord. All right. Well, Betsy, this has been fun. Uh, you know, we got... Why are you giggling? Nothing. <laughs> just like, I just want to be done. Don't you? Not I mean, isn't no, there like, you know, isn't there something? Do you have post-election there are a lot plans? Of emotions. Or desires? Oh, yeah. What, what, yeah. What are, uh, I'm hoping to go to Thailand because my brother lives there. So hoping to take off a decent amount of time and leave my laptop at home and yeah, eat a bunch of good Thai food. I'm, try- I'm trying to go to um, uh, South America. 
like Argentina oh, cool. or something. Nice. All right, Betsy, that's 20 minutes. I'll talk to you later. Thanks. All right. Bye. bye.